Thank you, Franz, for this uh, introduction. Now let's uh, start with the Secure Manager. The purpose of this uh, step is to uh, install the Secure Manager with a special focus on the associated uh, functionality. I will introduce first the Trust Zone and also the new product state of the STM32H5. And then we will install the Secure Manager and the user application demo, which uh, is using this uh, Secure Manager, so that uh, you will be able to see how it works and what uh, have a first introduction of what it is doing. So, to understand the Secure Manager, you really need to first understand what is Trust Zone. So, let's take five minutes on this topic. First, the Trust Zone was a uh, Introduced by ARM in the Cortex M33 and M23, ST is using only the M33. This new concept introduced a, a new internal state called uh, Secure that allows to create isolation between two different areas, the Secure and what we call the non-secure or trusted, non-trusted. This is an internal isolation that is uh, controlled by hardware. So when you are executing in a non-secure state, you cannot access to any resource located on the secure side. So it's the main purpose of this is to isolate the secret assets on the secure side the key store, the, some, also the cryptographic operation using the, the keys stored in the key store and uh, to store anything you need to keep secret. And on the interested part, so the non-secure, it's usually where lies the normal application that is communicating with the outside. So because of communication, you may have some surface of attack and even if a hacker is um, able to take control over the device, for example, taking control over the program counter on the non-secure side, uh, this hacker will have no way to access to the secure side. That's uh, the reason of this uh, isolation. So uh, you understand it uh, addresses the um, uh, attacks from the remote. So an attacker is using a remote access. Uh, so for example, uh, Ethernet or Wi-Fi connection or any uh, connection with a protocol and uh, tries to uh, tamper the device through this uh, remote connection. So here we have the secure code on the secure side, the uh, key store, the, the cryptographic and the secret assets and on the non-secure side, the application protocol. That's the main point of isolating secure and non-secure. To go a little further now, to understand how it works uh, after boot, so after the reset, the program counter is executing in secure side. So the point of the secure part is to configure the platform and decide which part is secure, which part is non-secure. So you, you have um, a full configurability over the platform to say which part of the internal flash of the internal RAM is secure and which part is non-secure, which peripheral, like a UART, ADC, any, any peripheral of the microcontroller can be set secure or non-secure. So this is where the main configuration occurs. Then, once the secure code has executed, has configured the platform, checked that everything is OK, you can jump to the non-secure application. Non-secure application is doing what the device is made for and is able to call a secure API that is implemented on the secure side. So this secure API acts as a gateway to uh, secure code. So you, the secure code uh, decides what kind of service it will provide to the non-secure side. So it's up to you. If you own the secure code, you can implement what you, what you want. In our case with Secure Manager, this, all this part will be 
implemented by the secure manager. That's the way it works with the trust zone. Now, a second introduction is the new product state. As you may know, on the STM32H5, we introduce a product state instead of RDP. It's not completely new. For example, the open state is exactly the same as RDP level zero. So RDP, if you are aware of STM32, is the readout protection and acts also as a device lifecycle. So RDP zero is open, RDP one, the flash is protected, but you can still access to the JTAG to be able to do a regression to RDP level zero. And RDP two is uh, the device is uh, locked. You cannot access it anymore with the JTAG. Uh, and the application that is uh, already there is running uh, without problem. Here we have so open state equivalent of RDP level zero. We have a closed state. So this is uh, now uh, the state that will be used uh, in the field. Uh, it is equivalent to uh, the CAD RDP2. So we have a device where you can use a keys to regress the device. So the, the STM32 U5. So the closed state is equivalent to, to this uh, CAD RDP2. This means you have no JTAG or SW access, but you can still do a regression. The locked state is equivalent to RDP level 2. No way to come back. And there is this trust zone closed that is equivalent to RDP level 0 0.5, where only secure memory is protected. It allows the development in the non-secure side. So to, to sum up, RDP level 0, you have access to all the parts when trust zone is activated on non-secure and secure. Uh, with trust zone closed, you remove the access to the secure part and leave access to the non-secure. And you will see that that state will be the, the state we will use for the secure manager in development. Then in a product state closed, you are like equivalent to RDP level one, but with no more uh, JTAG access. Uh, so it's more equivalent to, as I said, to CAID RDP2. And there is no JTAG access, but with the possibility to come back, you will see this later. And in the lock state, no possibility to reopen the device. So now we are ready to discover the Secure Manager. Just as I said, Secure Manager lies on the secure part. So all what we provide with Secure Manager will be located on the secure side. And we provide an application example that is on the non-secure side and that is able to use a secure API. And this secure manager is provided with um, this secure manager application kit, which is the concatenation of the standard cube H5 with a secure manager zip file that you need to add on top of it. And uh, with this installation of the, the workshop, you should have done already this uh, unzip and you should have in your PC uh, in a such a way where you have the cube and after installing the secure manager, you have this secure manager with the scripts and resource associated to secure manager, the debug authentication scripts that we will see uh, later during the workshop, SMAK application uh, that is uh, an example of the usage of the Secure Manager API and really an example of uh, how to use this uh, API and the DIPI itself that provides uh, standard PSA services. So in the ecosystem, we will install first the Secure Manager with a default application. And on the second step, we will uh, compile and download the SMAK example. So let's start with the, this first step. Here I have connected my board and you can see that uh, there is a demo application by default. 
that is on this board uh, that uh, is based on touch gfx with a, a display so you should connect first your board to your pc to be able to go on and now we are ready to uh, download the secure manager on the target so to do this we will start from our initial board in uh, virgin state which is not really the state the case we have already some code inside it but it's not important here we will launch a script that is using uh, stm32 cube programmer that will download everything needed on the target it will configure set up the trust zone put all these components on the secure side and a, a very simple uh, led bling default application on the non-secure side so if i go to next slide you can see we need to launch a single script provisioning auto.bat so to do this i advise you for this workshop to create uh, two uh, shortcuts one on the security workshop so here at this um, well on the directory you want to use to do the hands-on so we propose training stm32h5 security workshop and here you can add hands-on material and the hands-on directory where you will generate the code and the hands-on material is the one that you should have downloaded and the second um, shortcut should be on the firmware package you have installed and here it should be by default installed in your directory your own uh, user directory stm32 cube repository if you have a space it will not work uh, in this version it should work in the next one i think it will be fixed if you have a space in this directory just copy this firmware uh, in another directory uh, to do this example so what you need to do is to go in the projects and we use this h573 discovery board and go to rot meaning root of trust provisioning you can see normally a secure manager directory and here you have this provisioning auto.bat so just launch provisioning auto.bat this will launch a script that is doing several steps so on the first step uh, it is building um, uh, checking the configuration files then you can see that uh, we are preparing internal trusted storage we are preparing a sfi file that is uh, an encrypted file and then we switch to secure installation and then you can see that the board now is uh, downloading we can see here if i yeah if you can see the the leds blinking that it is showing that it is downloading and then the at the end you have this led blink occurring now just launch terra term and create a new connection and look for stlink virtual com port and connect to it so i can delete the other one and if i press reset you will see that uh, the board sends the version of the secure manager and uh, something else that is called stu root we will detail this a bit later so now you have downloaded the secure manager with the default application you can see here leds are blinking we have set up the serial port uh, just make sure that you have set up the right speed i had it on my side and that's why it was working fine then we press the, uh, the reset button so now we have downloaded this secure manager we can compile and download the smak to do this you first need to launch the stm32 cube ide so let's launch this ide 
uh, I have it here, 2 by D 1.14.0. So uh, use, for example, this um, uh, directory. So in the, no, sorry, in the, yes, this one and create here a directory folder. Uh, so I will call it workspace and copy this just to, for this training. And I launch a workspace. You can see it uh, generates a metadata here. And we will have the STM32 cube ID launching. Just close this and open the project. So the project is located in our secure, in our cube firmware. So just go to project H5 discovery kit application, ROT application, and SMAK appli. Click on cube ID. I will close this and select folder. And you can open it. After this, you just need to compile. So you can build the application pressing on the hammer here. In the compilation output is in this window. And you can see that at the beginning we have launched, uh, it's too late, we have launched a pre-build and we will launch also a post-build script to sign the binaries. We will see later why it is important. So you should have this post-build dot bat that is uh, finishing successfully. So now we have our application. It is a, a simple example that we will download to, our, to the target. So to do this, you can launch debug as. So just click left click here and you can do debug as C, C++. And you can see you have by default two different debug configuration. Please use the debug download uh, configuration. So here you should see something like this because uh, if you didn't update the ST-Link firmware, uh, it will propose you to update it. So press yes. This, you have this uh, pop-up window that uh, allows you to open the ST-Link in update mode. And you can see here that uh, we have a new version of the ST-Link. You just need to upgrade it. As soon as it is finished, you can launch again the download on the target. So it's finished now. And then you can just press, you have already this default that is available, default configuration that is available. It will start to again to recompile and download on the target. Okay, uh, here you can switch to the debug perspective. And you can see that the application was downloaded successfully and now we are at the beginning of the example application. You can launch it, resume. And if I come back to the COM port, you can see that now we have a demo application with five different menus that we will uh, explain a little more now. I will first open a little more screen. I press a key and I go in and press one for internal trusted storage. So this first menu is for the internal trusted storage so it can be called also as a secure storage 
where you, you can see different uh, APIs, a first set for new data and a second state for factory data. So this means that uh, with this trusted storage, you can provide uh, some data to this storage and then get it back, get information about this data and remove it. So you can see one, I have uh, some example here to write data. I call an API to get it back, so I get the same. If I get information, this is the attributes related to this data, and then I can remove it. If I try to get data again, it will fail because I already removed it. And the second set of um, menu is for factory data. This means that we can provide at factory pre-provision internal trusted storage. And here, if we try to set, so I press five, you can see that it fails because the data is already uh, in the trusted storage. So we cannot uh, overwrite it. But here we, get, we can get the value. So it depends if I press get info, the fact that you can get the information of the data here depends on the flags that you have here that allows you to uh, read the content of the, the key. It's possible to avoid this, to keep uh, the, the secret inside the secure part and to be used only by the cryptographic operations. And if I try to now to remove this data, it will fail also because it's uh, supposed not to be uh, removed. So this is it for the internal trusted storage. Next point is uh, cryptography. So you can see we have a standard cryptography with a random generator, symmetric cryptography with a different chaining mode with a GCM, CBC, CCM, the hash, two different hash, uh, and then asymmetric cryptography with RSA and uh, ECDSA, where we can uh, generate uh, signatures and things like this. So we can press one for random, so you have a random. And if I press two, you can see all the PSA APIs that are used, and all this gives you implementation examples inside the code that is here. So we are the SMAK that we are providing here. All the examples we have uh, the different uh, codes. So in the crypt.c, the example of the different calls to the, to the PSA API. So for example, PSA sign message, get key attributes, these kind of things you can have uh, also in the crypto test command, you have many implementation uh, example. Um, and that's the purpose of this. Uh, you can see that uh, we can uh, generate a signature using a DUA user key, a factory ITS key. We will see it a bit later. Then we have this initial attestation. If I create press one, we get an attestation that uh, is signed by initial attestation private key that provides all the details of the version and the hash of the um, different components. This allows a server to make sure that the device it is talking to is the genuine one. So this Initial attestation is a, a standard way of doing uh, specified by ARM. Then you have a firmware update. And here you can see we have uh, several menus. And mainly, you can see menus related to non-secure application. So non-secure application is the one we have here. So we can update this uh, SMAK appli, for instance. We have also uh, menus related to Secure Manager to be able to update and install the, a new version of Secure Manager. And the last one for STU Rot, you have seen already. And uh, Fabrice will talk a bit more later uh, about what it means. Basically, it's a second stage bootloader. 
and the last point is the certificates so you can see that uh, we provide two certificates a DUA uh, X509 certificate DUA user and the initial attestation certificate so two different certificates that are pre-provisioned on each device each H5 has its own certificate with its own private key associated to the public key in the certificate. So this allows you to uh, identify each device you have from uh, IoT point of view. So this is a first overview of um, what you get with a secure manager and this uh, SMAK application with all the examples we have. So now I will come back to the slides and here just to as a conclusion we have seen uh, that installing secure manager is uh, quite simple and uh, the point that we can develop a non-secure application that is working the, with the secure manager and we could see uh, an overview of the content provided by this uh, example application we call SMA key. So I leave the floor to uh, Fabrice who will give you uh, more details about this uh, new solution and uh, overall uh, strategy regarding the security. Thank you for your attention.